In this lesson, we are going to talk about philosophy and religion. We are going to go through three topics. The first is Confucius and his philosophy. The second is Buddhism and Taoism, and the three other religions. We all know that Confucius is the most famous Chinese person in the world, and the Chinese culture was actually based on his philosophy. So we will spend more time on Confucius and his philosophy, or we can call it Confucianism. And then we will talk about the Buddhism and Taoism, which are also very important in China. Buddhism was introduced in China in first century, and Taoism was actually a Chinese religion. Other religions like Christianity and Islam's will also be talked about. Now, first, let's look at Confucius and his philosophy. We will go through the life of Confucius and what he advocated,、uh, his philosophies and Confucianism, and also his influence on the world. Now, first, let's look at his、uh, biography. Confucius was born 2,000 years ago. He was a Chinese great thinker and social philosopher, whose teachings and philosophy have deeply influenced not only Chinese ourselves but also our neighbors. That include Korean, Japanese, and Vietnamese. This is the portrait of Confucius.、Uh, of course, at that time there's no cameras, so this is only a painting by the people. Uh, after him, so we can see here、uh, not a very handsome person before you.、Uh, Confucius' pupils has already noticed that his teacher was very ugly.、Uh, some people ask that,、uh, do you think Confucius is handsome? No, of course the answer is no. But his people said, do not tell a person is good or not according to his appearance. Of course, my teacher, my master, is ugly, but his heart is so brilliant. His thought is so great. So you can see here that the Confucianism emphasizes the meditation、uh, in people's heart. This is the map shows you the time when Confucius was living. You can see at that time, even though the China was under a Zhou Dynasty, but there are many kingdoms. Located in central China, and you can see at the Shandong Peninsula, there is a kingdom that is called Lu, that is the hometown of Confucius. He was born there. He lived there for a while, and he began to travel to many other kingdoms in central China, try to、uh, persuade the kings of those kingdoms to accept his theory. However, during his lifetime. His request was turned down by many kingdoms because at that time China was at a war time, and there are a lot of、uh, conflicts and quarrels between these kingdoms, and so the military conflict dominated the whole China. So nobody wants to listen to Confucius theory about the peace and benevolence. So only after his death, people began to realize that Confucius was a very great thinker. But during his lifetime, actually, he was nobody, or we can say he was equally as many other philosophers at that time. And after his death, of course, he was、uh, put on the top of the Chinese philosophers, and everybody accept the fact that he paved the foundation for Chinese culture. However, he was criticized several times during history. Especially in modern time history, and we all know that、uh, during the Cultural Revolution、uh, in 1966 to 76, and he was criticized, and also the Confucianism was considered a very bad、uh, culture at that time. But now people try to rethink、uh, what we had did to Confucius and his philosophy, and now Chinese people. Still consider Confucius as the highest philosopher in history. Now let's look at what Confucius said about his philosophy. Confucius thought had been developed into a system of philosophy known as Confucianism, or in Chinese, Ru Jia. It was introduced to Europe by Jesuit Matthew Ricci 
uh, in 17th century, who was the first to Latinize the name as Confucius. So actually, Confucius is the pronunciation of a Chinese word, Kung Fu Zi, which means teacher Kong or master Kong. So the family loyalty is very important in Confucianism. Confucius said the relationships between family members should be harmony, and the wives should show respect to husbands, and the children should obedience to the parents. And also, the philosophy advocates ancestor worship, especially those deceased ancestors. And also, the philosophy emphasized the respect of the elders by their children, and according to later interpreters of husband by their wives. Another thing that the philosophy emphasized is the personal and the governmental morality, correctness, and social relationships. Also, the philosophy tell people to look for justice and sincerity. Confucius' principles gained wide acceptance, primarily because of their basis in common Chinese tradition and belief. He championed family as a basis for ideal government. So actually, Confucius tell us how we should do to others in the family, how we should deal with the relationship between family members. And then we will copy these principles or rules to the whole society. So actually, he set the family as a model for the government or the state. His teachings may be found in the Analects of Confucius, or in Chinese it is called Lun Yu, a collection of the uh, fragments of Confucius' saying, and compiled many years after his death. Modern historians do not believe that any specific documents can be said to have been written by Confucius, but for nearly 2,000 years he was thought to be the editor or author of all five classics. These classics also paved the foundation for Chinese culture, so we all attributed these contribution to Confucius. Here is the picture of uh, his work, Analects. We can see here this is the original Chinese book, and you can see here we use Chinese characters, not alphabets, and Chinese read from the right to the left, and we read from the top downwards. So you can see we start from the right up corner and read the words uh, top downwards. And you can see the calligraphy here uh, is very beautiful. You find a lot of stamps on the lower right corner, and these stamps are from the owner of the book. That means this book has been passed from one owner to the other, and have been collected and preserved for many years. And the more stamps, so the more valuable the book is. In the Analects, Confucius presents himself as a transmitter who invented nothing. He put the greatest emphasis on importance of study. And it is the Chinese character for studying that opens the text or xue, the learning. He first talked about how to learn. In this respect, he is seen by Chinese people as the greatest master. And this is the words uh, I single out from his works. We can see here how he talked about learning. He said, to learn and to practice what is learned time and again is pleasure, isn't it? He also said to have friends come from afar is happiness, isn't it? And to be unperturbed when not appreciated by others is gentlemanly, isn't it? So we can see here how Chinese people uh, learn how to study, how to treat friends from far away from his philosophy. <laughs>